UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Welcome to another exciting edition of Bruin Talk, where it's all Bruin athletics all the time. I'm your host, Courtney Costo, along with Nick Mohajer. And today we're going to be talking about UCLA women's golf and women's tennis with uh, head coach of the women's golf team, Ms. Carrie Forsyth, and the associate head coach of our women's tennis team, Coach Rance Brown. But first, let's take a look at some upcoming events. Our first guest is women's tennis associate head coach Rance Brown, who's in his 13th season with the Bruins and uh, was the top assistant to head coach Stella Sampras for 11 years. In fact, he was so good as an assistant coach that Rance was named the ITA National Assistant Coach of the Year in 2000 and uh, has been a part of the program, a very integral part in uh, recruiting. Coach Brown was named the ITA National Assistant Coach of the Year in 2000 and was recently hired by the Riviera Country Club to head up their Junior Elite Tennis Program. So we're very excited to have him here today. Coach Rance Brown, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. We were just talking earlier, you live in Laguna Beach and you make quite a commute every day to be a part of this program. What is it about UCLA that keeps you coming back and driving to us? You know, I, I feel very blessed. Uh, the opportunity to work with the young people where they're at in their lives. Um, such a high level of, of competition and development in, in their tennis. And, um, you know, I, I just feel very, very fortunate to be part of a program that's going to compete and try to win a national title each year. I'm sure the traffic's got to get to you, though, at some point. It does. It <laughs> does. Uh, that's why I've taken a job at Riviera, and I probably will be making uh, my move down to Los Angeles permanently. But uh, supplementing, I've had a program down in Orange County uh, through another club, okay. but uh, now recently I've made the move down here to Los Angeles and uh, will make my residence here now. Oh, great. It seems like a common theme though. A lot of the coaches here at UCLA and the students are just blessed to be at such a prestigious school and athletic department. It's a destination, not a True. stepping stone. It, it is truly an inspiration to be around student athletes who compete at a high level, academically at a high level, and you're just getting quality. You know, you go out and you recruit, and you just don't have to recruit the talent. You can recruit character, and, mm -hmm. and to be a Bruin, it, it is an honor to be a coach or an athlete, and it's, it's quite special. Now you mentioned you were just hired by the Riviera Country Club to coach their elite junior program. So what are kind of some of the responsibilities that you have there, and how does that kind of help your coaching here at UCLA as well? Well, it definitely keeps your, your hands out there mm -hmm. in the junior world and kind of lets you know what's going on. Again, that teaching part and developmental part um, out there with the youth, it definitely, definitely keeps you uh, challenged in different mm -hmm. areas. But um, I really enjoy that aspect. Here you get challenged in so many other areas where players' games might be pretty much together, their identity uh -huh. as a tennis player. 
So there you're getting to shape a lot more uh -huh. and, and teach a lot more. But here it's the guidance, uh, maybe try to get a player to, to develop weapons and just mm -hmm. their tennis game might be ahead of them mentally. So okay. there you're, here you're uh, definitely uh, challenged on some other levels and the team aspect uh, definitely adds an awesome, awesome feeling to the, th the situation with tennis. Coach, you've really excelled in the area of recruiting and we all know that's such a huge part of right. having a successful team. And you get your pick of the litter and you mentioned recruiting character. So what advice would you give to a young athlete that's good but that needs to set herself or himself apart? Correct. Well, I've learned so much from Coach Stella Sampras Webster and her being here as a student athlete and now a coach. It takes a special person to be challenged in the classroom and out of the classroom on the field. Um, so really recruiting a young lady that can be challenged in those areas. But I, I have to tell you, recruiting character is huge. Yeah. There's so many, so many talented young people, but to come into a team environment, to get along and have the standards that it takes to be an, a UCLA Bruin athlete, it, it really, really is amazing because you're gonna be challenged every day in the classroom and every day on the courts and you're gonna be taken out of your comfort zone. So for those situations with a young person developing, Understand, we do look at the big package. We mm -hmm. do look at the nice person. We do mm -hmm. look how, if you're going to be coachable. You don't just take their stats on paper yeah. and say, yeah. okay, her I want, her I don't. No. I mean, something's got to stand out. You've got to remember somebody somehow, and they've got to be a part of your team. Exactly, and I think the team part with the individual sport, it's so right. unique throwing these young ladies in this uh, equation where you are putting them into a team and seeing a young lady that probably can deal with things like that and come into an event and get along, deal with conflict and all those tools that they're going to have to build through life, right. they'll we'll build here uh, through this experience of being a UCLA athlete. Well, now with much of the individual competition already over, how did the players do this so far? You know, our fall here um, at UCLA, Stella Sampras and mm -hmm. uh, Webster and I don't force the winning so much. It's, it's really forming and peaking towards uh, through the year and forming a base. Mm -hmm. But we had a good fall. Um, we didn't have a great fall, but again, we're not looking at wins and losses. Um, I would say we have a young team, um, but um, we have a very talented team. And now the tennis team also seems to do really well in the classroom all the time. How do you manage to keep the girls performing at such a high level here at UCLA? I, I think that's something that Coach Sampras is, is the standard she set. Um, the expectations that um, she has as a UCLA Bruin tennis player is quite high. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's expected. Um, we've been very fortunate, again, that's part of the recruiting process. I think you look at these young ladies who have had AP courses, and mm -hmm. now you get young people that are homeschooled quite a bit, but still you really want to look at that total picture here at UCLA, one in the quarter system. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're not independent, if, you're, if you don't take things you know, abreast, it's going to be very challenging. Right. So um, it's something we really look at as a, as a Bruin tennis player. Now, there are basically two major components about being an athlete, the mental part and the physical part. True. So tell me about where your team is at right now, physically and the mental aspect. I think physically we're fine. I think mentally uh, when you get in there and That's young, the challenge. That's <laughs> a challenge. And young people accepting the roles. We have six players that play singles and uh, three doubles teams. And I mm -hmm. think them finding their comfort zone mm -hmm. um, and, and learning how to compete. All of a sudden, you're not competing just for yourself. You're competing for the team, the UCLA tradition. And I think for a lot of our young players, uh, that's something to get used to. But uh, I'm, I'm very pleased where we're at physically. And I think as we go on uh, a dozen matches into the season, uh, we're going to even do better. We spoke uh, earlier with Coach uh, Lamont Vaughn of the track team. and. And he mentioned that put, just putting on the UCLA uniform is such a privilege and it means so much. And that's a lot of the mental part of it. So how, how do you coach your girls to deal with that? You know, it is something. I, I think you can tell them as much as you want. Uh, being a student athlete and when you compete and those expectations when you get out there and realize that other girl with a different color skirt, you know, <laughs> it, it can be intimidating for both ways. It yeah. can help you and it also can be a hindrance. Now, tennis is generally thought of as solely an individual sport, but there also is doubles, like you mentioned earlier. True. So how do you and the coaches decide the pairings for doubles? 
Well, I think Coach Dallas Sampras Webster, who was an NCAA doubles champion mm -hmm. um, here, I think she has a great build, deal of knowledge. Our volunteer assistant, Bill Zima, um, who had in, was a head coach here and had doubles teams that won the national championship. That chemistry out there, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you get an upperclassman with one of your younger players. And just complimentary in a sense of you might have one aggressive young person and one person maybe that sets things up. So it, it is something that's an ongoing process this year. We're definitely rebuilding in a sense of our doubles teams where maybe okay. the last four years we've had some set teams. Mm -hmm. But um, we're ongoing there. We have uh, eight players and four doubles teams, and I think one team has solidified our number one team, which is a top five team in the country. But wow. our two and that's three amazing. team, uh, we're, it's work in progress. Work in progress, okay. <laughs> <laughs> work in pro and I think the kids like that. They, they all know they're going to have potential to get out there and perform and have a it's chance to It's great motivation. Play. It's yeah. not great set motivation. and it can change every day. You know, the competition in practice is quite high. Um, there's not a lot of difference from our number one, number eight. Maybe it's so experience. huge to have competitive practices, mm -hmm. isn't it? Because then when you get in the game you're, uh, or a match, you're way more comfortable. I, I think that's where we're benefiting. Yeah. Uh, our, our practice matches with our inner squad matches can be, I would say, 50% of the time can be very competitive, uh -huh. even more than some of your, your dual matches. So, really? But that makes things even easier for these young ladies uh, coming out here. The depth we have this year is quite amazing. We're, we have a very fine young team. It's just uh, hopefully we can give the guidance and uh, the direction and, and have them peak. Well, actually, you know, one thing I'd like to know is some of your goals for this year for the team and as a coach, you know, um, do you set out before the season things that you want to accomplish in a coaching aspect and then also goals that you want the girls to achieve throughout the entire year? Um, I, th I think individual, um, as, as a coach this year, it's a lot more teaching mm -hmm. than coaching. There's a lot more hands-on. Um, years past, the last three or four years, Stella's had a very mature team. It's just guidance. Uh, she had, we had put that, the heavy lifting in. But this year, again, it's a lot more hands-on. So we knew that coming into the season. Mm -hmm. And we kind of prepared ourselves for that. Um, I like that part. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really do like the hands-on part and seeing these young people grow throughout the year and teaching them and seeing them have their ups and downs, which hopefully in May when we go to the NCAA outdoors, uh, we peak. And um, that's, that's a challenge. That's mm -hmm. what gets you coming to work every day. Yeah. And, knowing what kind of fires you have to put out and where you're going to have to keep those challenges coming from. We like to keep you on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> definitely so. Definitely so. UCLA has a slogan that we like to use here in athletics, champions made here. We've yes. all heard that. Yes. What in your mind is a champion? You know, I think, especially in individual sport, if you can't conceive it, you won't achieve it. And I think the rich tradition that this school has set um, and trying to teach that to your young athletes and coming here and their expectations, they learn it pretty quick. Yeah. But still, it's nothing like going out there and the expectations put on it. Um, again, we have great leadership with Coach Sampras, who was a champion in the classroom and mm -hmm. out of the classroom. And to have that kind of mentor um, out there for those young ladies and, and let them understand it's a process. Um, they have quite, we've had quite the success out there uh, through our program doing that and I think just letting them find their way but still be um, independent but still help them guide themselves and I think a lot of our young players have been the best wherever they've come from so they've had so much success and all of a sudden mm -hmm. they find out coming here at the elite level and the level of exertion it takes on a daily basis to compete and get your sleep do all these mm -hmm. things so I think that is a whole different aspect of your time management and learning how to be an elite athlete and take care of those those things so we look forward to seeing where our team's going to be and doing those things. And speaking of time management, we're all out of time with you today, but thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we want to thank Coach Rance Brown, Associate Head Coach of the Women's Tennis Team. And again, we really need your support. The Women's Tennis Team and the Men's Tennis Team plays at the LA Tennis Center here at UCLA. So come check them out. And up next, we will be talking UCLA golf with the Women's Head Coach, Carrie Forsyth after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made.
UCLA. Champions meet here. Hello and welcome back to UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm your host, Courtney Casso, along with Nick Mohajer. And today we're going to be talking about UCLA golf, specifically women's golf, with our head women's golf coach, Carrie Forsyth. But first, Nick, who's our student athlete of the week? Well, let me tell you. This week, we honor Jasmine Dixon of the UCLA women's basketball team as our student athlete of the week. For three straight games, Jasmine scored a minimum of 20 points against Oregon, Washington, and Washington State. Jasmine also managed to rack up six rebounds and five assists against national top scorer Oregon. In a following matchup against Oregon State, Jasmine scored double-digit points in the second half to keep a wide distance between the Bruins and the Beavers. The win brought the Bruins to a 14-6 overall and 7-2 Pac-10 record, their best performance in conference play since the 2002 season. Jasmine was also named Muscle Milk Student Athlete of the Week after sweeping the Washington schools on the road, shooting 75% from the field, and scoring a season-high 25 points. Jasmine continued to lead the team in scoring, rebounding, and steals. Congratulations, Jasmine, and good luck to the rest of the women's basketball team. If you'd like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. Our next guest is in her 11th season as the head coach of the women's golf team. Coach Carrie Forsyth is a consummate leader and is largely responsible for the women's golf team's success both on the course and in the classroom. Carrie herself was a Bruin golf star here at UCLA and then went on to have a very illustrious pro career and now is the coach of the women's golf team and we are very excited to have her as a guest here today. And I also have to mention she graduated from UCLA with honors. So on the course, a star as well as off. Thank you very much for being here today with us. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. So uh, Golf Digest said that you have one of the nation's most balanced teams in the country. That's quite an honor. How do you maintain that balance? Um, well, I think in large part it's about recruiting the right student athletes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we work really hard to get players that are both, you know, obviously excellent on the golf course and excellent students. And because of that, and because of the academic reputation of UCLA and, and our athletic reputation, mm -hmm. um, I think that's why we've continually been able to you know, do very well in that poll, yeah. <laughs> which, I, which has, uh, in, in turn helps us in recruiting more yeah. athletes of that high quality. So. Absolutely, and I think a lot of people think that you just come to school as a student athlete and, and that's all that you focus on, but UCLA is very academically challenging. You've got you've to balance everything and academics are very important to even stay eligible as an athlete. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. I mean, being in the quarter system and just the constant demands, the, the speed, the pace of the yeah. education is really rapid. And with our team and our program, to we travel quite a lot, and we're you know we we play all year. We we really don't have any down season. So you have to really be at the top um, academically coming in in order to maintain and and keep your sport at the level that it needs to be to be on our pro, in our team on our program. So. Yeah. Um, you know, we again, it goes back to recruiting, getting the right athletes, and then just really trying to um, encourage them with their time management and juggling all the different aspects that go on as a student athlete. And uh, we work really hard on that, and I think that's why we've, we've been successful. Now, what are some of your expectations for the season? Well, um, you know, we have a great team, mm -hmm. and we're ranked pretty high right now. I think two going into yeah. this spring. It's pretty good. So it's pretty good. Um, you know, we, we didn't win any tournaments in, in the fall, so hence the number two ranking. We uh -huh. finished second every event we played. Oh. Um, but uh, we played some very strong tournaments and we had some great finishes. And uh, you know, our expectation is just to continue getting better, um, really strive to win some events in, in the coming months, and mostly just to be prepared when we go into the national championship to contend for the title and give it another shot this year. So. And speaking of, last year you guys did give it a shot and the it ended up finishing Arizona uh, Arizona State, mm -hmm. then UCLA and USC, top three finishes. Yes. So do you expect the same three teams, obviously I know you won a championship, but do you expect the same three teams to be in contention again this year or I someone do. else? Actually, I, I really feel like we are the probably the three strongest teams mm -hmm. um, in the nation right now. Uh, Duke is also very strong this year. There's a couple of little sleeper teams out there. Mm -hmm. um, Auburn's very good. Alabama's sneaking up. Um, but the you Pac-10 is very dominant in women's golf. We have been. And yeah. oddly enough, you know, a few years back, you know, five years ago, the talk was always about how strong the East was, how strong the mm. teams in the East were. And, and we, we felt on the West Coast very much like, you know, we weren't getting a fair credit for the quality of our teams. And 
Obviously, the last couple national championships, the finishes have been largely dominated by the West. Um, last year, obviously, was ASU, UCLA, USC in that order. The year prior to that was USC, UCLA, ASU in that order. So, you know, it's been, uh, we've been doing very well in the West. And it's, it's tough because, obviously, we're competing against these teams all the time. And these are the top two, three, four teams in the country. And they're all Pac-10. So, mm -hmm. yeah, makes it challenging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've actually got the regional challenge coming up in Palos Verdes to kick off the 2010 season. Yeah. So how prepared are you for that? And, you know, what are some of your expectations to just start off the season? Well, we're, we're, we're getting prepared. Uh -huh. um, we had, you know, we had some rain days. It was pretty tough. And in, in golf, it's hard to practice when the course is closed and, yeah. you know, you've got rain and all that. But, um, you know, the team's looking good. Um, we, it'll be tough. It'll be a challenging event for us. One of our top players is um, out with an injury. And, you know, we're, we're just trying to fill in the lineup and, and get, you know, our number number six player to be in the number five spot and really, really do something. So um, we're, we're looking for just a good, solid event. Um, you know, hopefully we can put it together and, and, and get a win or get really close to a win. So, you know, we're just trying to prepare, and that's all we're doing this week and getting ready to go. And I think, we're, I think we'll do fine. Now, how do you actually get a player who maybe wasn't expected to play in that actual event to get their confidence up to be ready to actually play in something so big as the opener. How do you <laughs> do that? I mean, that's got to take part, a lot of yeah. coaching. I'm Mentally, assuming. that's, that's got to be yeah. very tough yeah. for that player that steps up and is now in the five. It is. It is. And, you know, because generally speaking, at least the way it's worked out this year, that, you know, our, our top five have, have been our top five mm -hmm. um, at every event we've played. And, you know, so it's great experience for them. And that's really how I try to emphasize it. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, it's a great experience. I mean, you, they came here to play golf. They came to play tournaments. This is another tournament, and you know we compete as a team all the time. That's how we determine who travels and who makes the lineup. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of inter-squad competition going on anyway. This is just an extension of that. And we really just almost try to de-emphasize what it means right. and just emphasize it's golf. You know, you play golf, yeah. and you just do your best. Don't overcomplicate it. Exactly. Just play the yeah. game that you the know The game is play. the game, and it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, the circumstances might change, the weather might change, but the game is still the game. And, we try to really emphasize that all the time. And so going in, you know, we got to look maybe a little bit more for, yeah. <laughs> for the one who's going to get, you know, tagged to be in that fifth yeah, spot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Golf is, is largely an individual performance sport like track is. But being on the, a collegiate team like at UCLA, you get that team aspect. And you played as a pro that maybe you don't get as a pro because it's just you out there by yourself. Here, you're part of a greater good. So mm -hmm. what does that team aspect bring? Uh, you know, I mean, it really, once the kids all buy into it, I shouldn't call them kids, once the young ladies <laughs> oh, uh, okay. all buy into it, um, it's, a, it's a transition. I mean, you yeah. come in and they've never played, they've, uh, most of them have never, ever played on any type of real organized team. So, um, you know, it's, it's really getting them to understand that in a team dynamic, you know, what one does can affect everybody. And it's more about what they bring to practice and how they work on their game and their you know, all that good stuff. But there are so many wonderful things about being in the team environment for a golfer. I mean, you've gone from being this lone wolf out there all by yourself all the time, and nobody really, other than your parents, nobody cares. Everybody is sort of your enemy. Yeah. Nobody's uh -huh. rooting for you. Everyone's against you. Exactly. And then you get into the team environment, suddenly you, you're surrounded by people who actually want you to do well. Yeah. And your teammates care, and, you know, if, you know, the better you do, the better the team does. And it's really the rewards in it are, are fantastic. And my favorite thing as a coach, I think, is to go later and see athletes who have graduated who their best friends, their bridesmaids, their you know, maid of honor are their teammates. Mm -hmm. that, that makes me feel really Shows good. Shows the camaraderie, the bond that was yes. created here. Yes, well, that was created at UCLA. So that's, that's really, a, I think, one of the greatest things. It's a really it. special thing to be a Division I college athlete at a place like this. It is. It really is. And, and we do emphasize that. We try to you know, always remind the girls because it's hard work mm -hmm. and you make a lot of sacrifices right. as an athlete to be on a team and in a program like this. And, uh, you know, when you're working to, so hard, you naturally just forget about how blessed you are to be where you are. Exactly. You get, you get caught up in the day-to-day -day and sometimes mm -hmm. like, oh, this is too much. I'm tired. I don't want to do this. So it's we really tough. try to, you know, we try to keep it fun. We try to really emphasize the enjoyment and, of being in the environment and, you know, sharing it with teammates. So A lot of fun. your former athletes have actually uh, gone on to have pretty successful golf careers. Mm -hmm. And how does it feel to know that you were kind of the catalyst that pushed them to achieve such success later on after college? Well, I don't, I don't know if it was always me. You know, sometimes maybe there was, there's been a few. I, I think mm -hmm. I've influenced the athletes that I've coached in a positive way. Mm -hmm. um, I, really, I really do feel that way. Um, you know, many of them are just driven on their own. I mean, they're just, you know, 
just step out of their way and they'll go and they're going to achieve great things. Yeah. But um, just having those relationships with the girls and seeing their success and knowing that maybe in some small way that I influenced that or gave them a deeper appreciation for the love of the sport or whatever, I, you know, that makes me feel good. And I, you know, I just want them to do well and be successful in whatever it is they choose to do, whether it's golf or something else in business or in life in general. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a great reward. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, national championships are wonderful, but for me as a coach, I really love to see them be successful in, in their sport and, and in life in general. So That kind of leads me to my next and last question. We're almost out of time here, but you've been a head coach here for 11 seasons. Can you pick out one memory that really sticks out as just a really something you'll never forget? <laughs> it's oh, 11 that's years. Be tough. <laughs> yeah, um, on the course, off the course, know, whatever. Gosh, there's so many. There's so many things that I would never forget. I want, you know, obviously when we won the national championship in 04, but before that, before we won that, we won the Pac-10 championship. And that, for me, I'll, I'll still get emotional. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, you know what, that this, was the is, this is the reason why UCLA is so <laughs> successful. Um, Carrie, this is a great uh, question to end on, and thank you very much for being here today. And <laughs> we didn't mean sorry. to make you cry. I hope none of my players see this, because they're going to laugh, because oh, I, no. I have a bad <laughs> habit of if I was one of your athletes, I was a student athlete here, if I saw my coach cry, it would mean the world to me, especially having the season opener coming up. So everyone else out here just saw how passionate you are about UCLA. Exactly. And again, this is why we are the, uh, have the most national championships in the country. It's because red. of people like oh. you. So thank you very much for being here today. On that note, that's going to wrap up another um, emotional edition of <laughs> UCLA Bruin Talk. Thank you very much to you at home for joining us. Uh, thank you to our first, our first guest, associate head coach of the women's tennis team, Rance Brown, who spoke with us earlier, and Coach Carrie Forsyth. Thank you thank very you. much, and we'll see you again right here on UCLA Bruin Talk.